and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Leprechaun Lager. <laughs> Is he going to try and steal it? Yeah, because it's full of <laughs> Brewer's Gold and Golden Promise. That little bastard. <laughs> Where's me gold? <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you 1974's Death Dream. This movie was a request from one of our viewers, Dustin Bainbridge. Bob Clark directed this, and he's also famous for Black Christmas, which is a Canadian gem. Children shouldn't play with dead things. On a lighter note, Christmas story. Yeah, it's, it's funny, all these dark, <laughs> seedy kind of horror movies in a Christmas story. <laughs> The movie is written by Alan Ormsby, who also wrote Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. And he also wrote and co-directed a movie we covered a long time ago now in our first season called Deranged. The movie stars John Marley, who was famously in The Godfather. No! <laughs> Lynn Carlin is also in this as well as Richard Bacchus. Not Bracchus. <laughs> Bracchus. <laughs> the movie starts off kind of as a flashback almost to all these war scenes in the jungle in Vietnam. And you see somebody get shot and you hear, please come back, please come home. Then we get introduced to this family, their son, Andy, who's away in Vietnam, hoping and praying that he comes back. They get a knock at the door. Somebody from the military who hands them a telegram. Yeah. The dreaded, the dreaded uh, telegram. Yeah. Nobody ever wants that when their children are out to war. It's Andy. It's Andy, yep. And no, it can't be, right? The, the mother's in complete denial. So we see this truck driver that kind of stops at the side of the road and he picks somebody up. He pulls off into this diner. Oh, just a couple packs of smokes and some coffee. Yeah, I gotta get going. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get going. I'm running late. Who's there with you? Just some guy I picked up. He's kind of weird. And he's a soldier. It cuts back to the family. The daughter wakes up and she hears noises downstairs. While they're downstairs investigating, it turns out Andy's home. Yeah. <laughs> he is alive. And the dad, he's like, I thought you were dead. And Andy's response, which is very chilling, I am. The mailman, as he's coming by on his route, stops in and they're like, oh, you want some sandwiches, egg salad sandwiches? <laughs> well, sure, I'll take some of that iced tea, too. He's all <laughs> eating. <laughs> Helping himself to everything. And, like, Andy's just sitting there and he's just silent and kind of dead. And Andy just gets up and walks away. <laughs> I would do. <laughs> Who wants to listen to that shit? The dad is kind of pissed off by Andy's behavior. Well, I came back from war too, but I didn't act like that. And he brings all these like neighborhood kids over. He's like, oh yeah, come, come on over, come on. There he is, yeah, yeah, you, you talk to him. I know karate, I can show you some moves. And the dog starts barking too, and he grabs the dog by the neck and just holds it there and just chokes the dog to death. In the meantime, they've actually found this truck driver dead, kind of drained of his blood. They find a small little pinhole on him where he's been drained yeah. and his neck's all torn open. The dad's so distraught about the death of the dog. Butchie. Butchie. <laughs> that he goes to the local drinking hole. Like anybody would do, I think. And gets right pissed. Friend walks in, the doctor. Well, maybe you could come and talk to him. And they go up to his room and he's just rocking in this chair. And Andy doesn't have much to say, but he does find out that Andy got home hitchhiking and being picked up by a truck driver. He also just finished examining the dead body of the truck driver and he kind of puts two and two together. Right. Doesn't he have a house to go to or something? Yeah. <laughs> Doc goes back to his like office at the end of the night and picks up the phone. You think he's going to call the cops to let them know about Andy. Or think he's going to change his mind. He starts seeing all these things and right. shadows and hearing things. Okay, maybe we'll talk to the cops. And by that point, the line's dead. He goes to the door and it's Andy. I'm here for my checkup. <laughs> Ooh, it's yeah. middle of night. There's no pulse. No blood pressure, no, no pulse. pulse. I died for you, Doc. Yeah. And then he kills Doc, taking some of Doc's blood. 
to rejuvenate himself because he's kind of slowly been decaying. Andy's sister is trying to get him back into real life and sets up a double date. Andy at this point, just before he leaves, he looks in the mirror and again he's all deteriorating and falling apart and his hands are all crumbling. Yeah. So he puts on these gloves and puts on these sunglasses. He looks kind of cool. Looks super actually. creepy like some <laughs> fucking Andy Warhol or something. <laughs> So they go to the drive-in and he's in the back. He starts attacking his date and she's trying to fight him off and she takes off his glasses and just reveals these dead eyes, these kind of blank yellow eyes. That's where we're gonna end the plot. One of the best things about this movie, believe it or not, even though you don't see a whole lot, is the makeup, right? Yep. The makeup and the effects, which were done by the master, Tom Savini. This is one of his very first movies that he started out doing makeup on. The lighting for this movie and like the shots and stuff are also very, very good. Only light what they want you to see. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of darkness and that darkness is there for a reason because they don't want you to see, they want you to wonder. It's very professional. You have all these professional things going on on the low budget movie. Yeah. Which is interesting. There's some neat ambitious shots in this movie. Zooms that come like right out of the window of the living room, like yeah. way far out. Things are done for a very specific reason in this movie. It's just not like just throw up a camera and just shoot. It's all planned out very well. And another thing that's planned out well is the sound design. It tells the story along yeah. with what you see. Yeah, like all the background noise, like the, the crickets outside, mm -hmm. and then like when they're just sitting inside and all you hear is like the clock, tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick. It's kind of unnerving, right? Yeah. And there's that scene where the dad's sitting with the cops and he's kind of all nervous, cop playing with the blinds. Right. It's all annoying. <laughs> <laughs> ah, like yeah, it's unnerving. Stop here, it, right? yeah. And even like Andy, most of what he does at home is he rocks back and forth in that yeah. fucking rocking chair. Yeah. And it even unsettles like the dad. He's like, what is he doing up there? <laughs> well, just leave him alone while he's making me nervous. Yeah. You know, and like, it's unsettling. Which brings us to the characters and the <laughs> acting is fantastic. Exactly, and for a low budget feeling movie, the, the actors are top notch. Oh yeah. You know, and you really feel their anguish. You feel what they feel. You like uh, Lynn Carlin as, as the mom, like when mm -hmm. she finds out that Andy's dead, oh, and she breaks down and it's like, oh man, you believe it. Yeah. You're like feeling it with her. The dad, when he's starting to get all angry that right. Andy's not right and he gets all drunk and everything, you're super yeah, believable. He's, he's frustrated. Why are you drinking? You know why I'm drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Richard Backus as Andy does a great job of just being this kind of blank canvas. He's so unnerving, right? As yeah. soon as when they first open the door and you see him standing there. Yeah, this movie is basically just chocked full of like metaphors and it's got a lot of meaning behind it. The movie is saying something exactly. about war Yeah, and you know, these guys coming back from war. The Vietnam War was still going on for another, well, year anyways. This war was different from other wars previous. Which they kind of allude to, right? Yeah. The old man, oh, I came back from World War II, but I didn't come back like that. Nobody seems to understand these kids that came back and what they went through. Andy coming back dead. Exactly. It's kind of like... He's dead inside. Symbolizes these kids that came back from war with PTSD and basically yeah, dead inside. They're not the same. They're mm -hmm. not the same person they were when they left. The kid comes back and the parents just naturally assume that life will resume like normal. And they just want him to like snap exactly. back into normal life. Like nobody seems to understand or even want to try and understand yeah. what he's going yeah. through. Or to give him time to re exactly. or anything, right? Just thinking like the next day things will return back to normal. It's yeah. like, well that's not exactly the case. And the movie also kind of has a bit of that monkey paw theme to it where it's like, yeah, be careful what you wish for, you know, because mom's like, Come home, yeah. please come home, and if Andy come home, he does come home, but it's not the Andy you wanted to come home, right? Exactly. Death Dream is a very simple, low-budget movie that works perfectly. It all yeah. clicks, it all works. Very effective for what it does, and for the story that it's trying to tell, right? Yeah. It gets everything across. Yeah, so if you want like a good, simple, down-to-earth, but meaningful movie that's trying to say something about the time in which it was made mm -hmm. and has, you know, little 
point of view on the Vietnam War, check out Death Dream if you're a fan of like those Ormsby movies, you know, yeah. deranged and children <laughs> shouldn't play with dead things. And Tom Savini, right? If you like other Bob Clark movies like, you know, Black Christmas, well then you have to check out Death Dream. Exactly. It's, uh, it's up there in one of the best movies that those guys ever made. I think so. You yeah. know? Yeah, because yeah. it's saying something, unlike Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. It's kind of like a schlocky horror movie. This movie is like, it sets out to do something. Exactly, but it doesn't jam it down your throat. Right, yeah. Please check out 1974's Death Dream. And until next time, keep drinking and dreaming. <laughs>